uh, welcome back guys uh, today we'll be looking at the continuation of the last class uh, in the last last session we looked at uh, dc potentiometer uh, so today we'll be looking at uh, ac potentiometers so uh, so in the last class uh, we looked at uh, how we can find the uh, EMF of a DC uh, source now in this session uh, we'll be looking at how we'll be able to accurately measure what is the uh, value of the AC source uh, so in the last class I think uh, we also f uh, studied uh, about the calibration techniques and uh, how we can calibrate uh, the potentiometer and how we can accurately measure what is the value of a DC source or the EMF of a D DC source now we'll look at uh, how we can do the same uh, using an AC source or how we can do uh, how we can find the uh, voltage uh, RMS voltage of a AC source using a potentiometer of an unknown AC source so let's say uh, the uh, similar to the previous setup we have uh, AC source and there is a let's say a potentiometer wire of certain length and we have uh, this is a known source and let's say you have we have a another source which is an unknown source uh, of which we need to find uh, unknown source of which we need to find the uh, value of uh, the uh, RMS voltage right so let's call the uh, RMS voltage as VX which is the value which is what the value we need to find out and we have a known source now in the previous case as we uh, if you remember uh, we had used uh, a standard cell for a, a galvano uh, for the calibration isn't it so in this case uh, for AC meters uh, for AC measurements we can't uh, we don't have such standard cells for AC measurements so here uh, we had a rheostat and then a meter and then we connected it to the uh, potentiometer wire which is of uniform resistance this is a uh, wire with uniform resistance right so then we found the balance in the galvanometer uh, where the voltages were uh, get got balanced and all these things but in this case over here if we go with this setup uh, definitely we will not get a, a proper uh, accurate measurement and also uh, if you want to uh, have a proper accurate measurement we need to use a standard cell which is not available in the case of uh, AC sources so with uh, AC sources we can't have standard cells uh, which provide a, a standard exact value of AC uh, so in that case we'll again have to depend upon the DC source now we'll look at how we can we can uh, do the calibration with the help of a DC source in a AC potentiometer that is what we are going to look at in today's session so first of all uh, what we need to ha have is a uh, DC source DC standard cell so what we do is that we take a DC standard source so let's say we take a DC standard source like the one which we used in the previous uh, class uh, like the one we explained in the previous class uh, generally of 1.08 volts and then we have our potentiometer wire connected and then we have the AC source 
now the other problem is that a DC standard source can never uh, balance with a AC source because definitely you can see that the uh, voltages will keep on changing in an AC source and you can never uh, balance this particular AC voltage AC voltage with a DC supply isn't it so a DC supply is something like this which can never compensate or uh, which can never balance with a AC source so that is not possible so what we need to have is that we will have to use another DC source right similar to the DC potentiometer we'll have to use another DC source and then we can use a switch over here right and then after that we can use a rheostat and then from the rheostat through a galvanometer or an ammeter we can use an ammeter which is made out of a electrodynamometer type galvanometer and then we can connect it to the potentiometer wire now here uh, similarly we can have a AC source unknown AC source and a key over here so that you can interchangeably use the standard cell as well as the uh, unknown source this is the unknown AC source which is Vx let's say this is the source Vs and here you can use a switch and then through the switch from the switch you can use a galvanometer to find the deflections and then you can balance it on the potentiometer wire so for balancing the D uh, standard source we'll have to connect uh, the standard source to this galvanometer let's say this is uh, this is P1 uh, T1 and T2 let's mark it as P1 T1 T2 and let's mark this as P1 dash T1 dash and T2 dash pole and throw pole and throw right so in the initial uh, setup for the proper calibration what we need to do is that we'll have to uh, first connect make the connections uh, p1 dash t1 dash and p1 t1 so that the dc source over here let's call this as vd the dc source vd and the standard source uh, let's call this as vst which is the standard source uh, VC, vd and vst is connected to the circuit right and then once these uh, vd and vst is connected to the circuit we can find the balancing this is the jockey the jockey we can move the jockey over the potentiometer wire and then we can find the balanced uh, balanced value let's call it let's call this uh, value as uh, L1 so uh, we get the balance that we get the balance for VST at let's say L1 centimeters and uh, balancing in the sense the voltages are balanced and galvanometer shows zero deflection right zero amperes zero milliamperes or zero amperes so uh, for the voltage vst we'll get a particular value of l1 and we need to take the measurement in the ammeter also let's say it is uh, i1 amperes right corresponding to the uh, corresponding to the uh, rheostat so this is the rheostat 
so we set the rheostat in such a way that the measurements are in the range and to change the range you can use the rheostat as well as for uh, keeping the currents same for both the measurements now one thing we need to note is that uh, what we are going to do is that once we make the uh, standard standardization or the calibration uh, the VST, the value of VST will correspond to a particular length L1, right? Now, uh, in this case, in this case, uh, the voltage, per unit centimeters, per unit centimeter will be equal to VST divided by L1 right so this is the calibration that we are going to make the voltage per unit centimeter of the uniform resistance wire of the uniform resistance wire will always should be kept as VST per L1 this is the calibration that we are going to do I mean that we have done so to keep this value always same the the main thing we need to keep in mind is that the current through this ammeter the current through this ammeter should always be same throughout the experiment so what we can do is that once we have made the DC measurement and the DC calibration we can connect this uh, circuit to we can connect this circuit uh, with the new connections which is uh, P1 dash T2 dash and P1 T2 right now the AC sources are in connection right now what we need to do is that we'll have to adjust the rheostat adjust the rheostat in order to get the same value of current which is I1 right so this I1 is the current that we got using the DC uh, voltage source VD and right now we are connecting the voltage source VS now P1 dash T2 will correspond to VS and P1 T2 will correspond to the unknown voltage source VX right so these two sources are in connection and we need to get the same current i1 through the galvanometer now one doubt that would come to your mi mind is that here it is a ac source and the galvanometer that we are going to use is the electrodynamometer type galvanometer so electrodynamometer type so here the galvanometer or the ammeter is going to measure the RMS value of current RMS value of the AC current right now the RMS value of the AC current will be same as the RMS value of the DC current right because uh, when we measure the DC current it is also the galvanometer is also going to measure the RMS value now for DC as we know the RMS value uh, uh, is is the value that will directly come into the galvanometer and for AC RMS is same as the DC equivalent of that particular va value isn't it and therefore the same voltages will produce the same uh, the same currents will produce uh, the same voltage per unit centimeter on the potentiometer wire so you will get the same voltage per unit centimeter which is VST by L1 now to get the same voltage per unit centimeter the first thing you need to ensure is that the current I1 is maintained in the circuit so in order to get the same current I1 we will have to adjust the rheostat that is there over here this rheostat you will have to adjust in order to get the same value of current I1 which we got in the previous uh, setup so that you will get the same voltage 
per unit centimeter on VST. Now the voltage will also be the RMS voltage. So the RMS voltage, right? Now in DC, uh, in DC you can see the. Let's say if this is the value A. What what uh, what do you mean by RMS value? RMS value will be the square of A. Square of A, A square. Let's say if it is there for a particular time period T1. So root of A square into T1 by T1, which is root of mean of square terms, right? A square into T1 by T1. Uh, this is the root of square of A, A square, uh, square of A. And then when you have to take mean, you will have to multiply it with T1 and T1, and then you cut these two if you take the root you will again get it as a so it doesn't make a difference if the value of current is a then the rms value will also remain as a uh, when you take the uh, when you take the rms value for dc uh, for ac the galvanometer should show the same rms value uh, which is the uh, which is the i1 that we get for the part, uh, the corresponding dc so i hope this uh, is clear and the concept is clear for AC and DC, the RMS values. And now what we can do is that we can balance the VX source uh, through this galvanometer and through the jockey on the potentiometer wire. Let's say you get a particular length. Uh, let's say the jockey uh, gets balanced at this point. And let's say the length is uh, L2. Then the value of the uh, voltage source Vx would be the vo RMS value of the uh, voltage per unit centimeter, which is RMS voltage of the uh, RMS voltage per unit centimeter, which is Vst by L1 into the length, whatever length we are getting, L2. So this will be the final value of the uh, unknown source, uh, unknown AC source. And with the help of a, a set of DC sources, we can calibrate our uh, AC potentiometer and get accurate values of uh, the unknown AC sources through this uh, by doing this particular method. I hope you have understood this video. Uh, when I uh, this concept and uh, with this we'll wind up this class over here in the next class we'll be looking at uh, a bit more detail uh, of the same concept and uh, okay then guys bye